This year marks the 10-year anniversary of one of the most destructive hurricanes the U.S. has ever seen. A superstorm so massive, at one point, it spanned 800 miles between the East Coast and Great Lakes. In New Jersey, wind speeds reached a fierce 90 miles per hour. Over New York Harbor, 14-foot waves surged during high tide. In total, Congress earmarked $50 billion to fund recovery efforts. But never before had our area experienced a fury like Superstorm Sandy. The gusty wind keeps increasing in force and frequency, and the rain's coming down so hard it feels like BBs on your skin. Because of the flood waters, and what we are seeing is just total destruction. The real test now, how to rebuild. While we may not know if these storms will become more frequent, climate scientists are confident that hotter temperatures mixed with rising sea levels will result in more extreme impacts in the future. But how do these hurricanes form? And to what intensity? Let's check in with Storm Team 4's Janice Huff. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Janice Huff. I remember the power behind Sandy like it was yesterday. I was right here communicating the life-threatening danger it posed as it ravaged our coast. What does the future hold in terms of the wind? Possibly 80 to 90 mile per hour wind gusts by six o'clock as the storm makes landfall. Hurricanes like Sandy are complex, so let's start with the basics. There are three things needed for hurricane development. Warm ocean water, atmospheric instability, and light wind patterns aloft. Hurricanes form in the tropics where the air and water are the warmest. Ocean water evaporates. In an unstable atmosphere like a tropical wave, that moisture-rich air rises and thunderstorms form. These storms can grow into large clusters and due to the Coriolis effect, a phenomenon caused by the Earth's curvature and rotation, the cluster begins rotating counterclockwise here in the Northern Hemisphere. That's when organization into a classic tropical cyclone begins. When wind speeds reach 39 miles per hour, it becomes a tropical storm. At 74 miles per hour, you've got a Category 1 hurricane. And remember, there are five categories of hurricanes ranked by wind speed, the Saffir-Simpson scale. Category 1 and 2 are the weakest. A Category 3 hurricane is a major storm with winds over 111 miles per hour. At its peak, Sandy was a Cat 3. When a storm reaches Category 4 and 5 strength, we begin to see complete devastation like with Andrew and Ian. Now let's focus on the impacts of global warming on hurricanes. As air temperatures continue to rise, so do ocean water temperatures. Warmer water provides more energy for hurricanes to absorb, and that leads to stronger storms. We're seeing it now. More hurricanes are reaching major status, category three or higher. That means stronger wind, heavier rain, and higher storm surge. Add to that rising sea levels, which are another consequence of global warming and storm surge becomes even more devastating. By the year 2100, sea levels are estimated to be up to 75 inches higher along our coastline. The effects of global warming go beyond the hurricane season too. We're experiencing warmer and wetter winters and flush flooding will become a bigger issue year round as a result. If left unchecked, it's a trend that could continue for decades. Thanks Janice. And we're seeing these trends here at home. I caught up with New Jersey's top environmental officer to find out what residents can expect next. It made the cover of Newsweek, and no one could understand how it could still stand. For eight weeks, clothes have been hanging. We could make every vehicle electric we could turn off every power plant for wind and solar instead. We could do all of that tomorrow, and the circumstances will still get worse for at least the next 30 years. 
So because of those emissions that we've already pumped into the atmosphere, these conditions will get worse, no matter what we do, for some period of time. It was a life-changing event. I mean, we lost everything, pretty much everything we had in that house. We had to rebuild our lives pretty much from scratch. When I look back 10 years later, we're married, we have a house, we have a family, you know, a beautiful baby girl. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of, you know, surreal that, you know, we've come this far from, you know, losing everything. And, you know, you can see that the, the property's still empty. Are we ready for the next Hurricane Sandy? No, we're not. We're more ready than we were when Sandy hit us, but we're not completely ready. We've replenished beaches up and down the coast consistently to fight off erosion and be better prepared for the next storm. But because of the, the vastness of our coastline, the rise of sea level, the risk of storm inundation, there is so much to protect. And in 10 years, you can't possibly protect it all. And so we've got to continue down the path that we're on, making greater investments in shore protection and in infrastructure in order to be ready. So this is the house as it looked, um, you know, close to 100 years ago. It was actually built back in 1855 by a sea captain. It's always been like a historic part of this town. I mean, this is a picture that my uh, father took uh, you know, a couple of years before the storms. And those tulips actually still come up every year, believe it or not. According to the commissioner, New Jersey should plan for a sea level rise of two feet by 2050 and five feet by 2100. Every county in New Jersey is labeled abnormally dry as of early October, a back and forth that the commissioner says we may see for some time. Our climate reality is one of wild extremes where we're going to endure periods of drought interspersed with periods of intense rainfall. The, the biggest risks I see are in managing that influx of water, both from a coastal perspective and surge and from an inland flooding perspective like we saw in Ida. It's this double-edged sword of our climate reality. Our most underserved and disadvantaged communities endure the worst flooding, the highest heat indices, and the greatest incidence of illness associated with adverse air quality, which is a, also a function of our, our worsening climate. I haven't opened this gate in a while, so. How do you feel living across the street and seeing that plot of land? I, I mean, it's two-sided because one, you know, I, I look across the street and I see a reminder of, you know, what happened. And there's still a lot uh, about this town that hasn't really come back. That was, that was always the goal is to get back to Union Beach. We wanted to be a part of that, you know, comeback and victory, if you will. There's no one-size-fits-all answer to the climate changes residents have been seeing. Flood walls and levees can mitigate damage, but what about restoring natural barriers? The truth of the matter is that there is no one silver bullet that is gonna protect any one of our communities from the ravages of climate change. But there is a network of solutions. We do environmental protection because every single natural resource is doing something for us for free. So for example, your community may be flooding because we've removed the tree cover along the river bank and the root structure of those trees, what it was doing for us was literally holding the river bank together. And now it's not there anymore. And so we've got to build a flood wall instead. Nature is doing a job that we might underappreciate. These are, these are all wooden beams, um, and then, yeah, it's just held, held, held together by these braces that come back to the main pedestal. So this is the house actually being, you know, in the process of being built. Um, 
you know, the front, the front part of it was all windows at one time. Um, you know, now it's mostly facade. The reality is that that sea level is rising and that home that stood behind us was cut in half. And that is happening. And that is only getting worse. And we only get through it together. Shrine, I guess, uh, as, as, as part, of, uh, part of Union Beach. Remember what this was and remember its end. Thank you so much for following Chasing Our Climate. For more environment news and your storm coverage, head to our website and download our NBC4 New York app. I'm Linda Gaudino, News 4 New York.